All right, let's go to our guest uh, and the book, Stealth Invasion, uh, which again is from, I believe it's published by World Ed Daily, uh, WND.com. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Oman, thank you so much uh, for coming on the broadcast. Where should we start just to give people a breakdown, a boil down of, I mean, what's really happening? You're an expert on this. All I know is I see articles every day where a rapist or a child rapist or an alleged rapist is being released or about to be released, whether they're from Mexico or Iran, wherever it is, they seem to have more rights than I do. I mean, I wouldn't be raping a child, but if I, you know, d did, I wouldn't be released and just told to go free. I'm going to show some articles in a moment. What in the world's going on here from your research? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me on today, Alex. You bet. Uh, yeah, I started researching this back in the summer of 2014. Uh, for World Net Daily. And uh, if you recall back then, Alex, the big story in the news uh, at that time was the Central American children who were massing at our border, the U.S. Mexican border, and uh, illegal asylum seekers uh, massing at the border, getting aid and shelter from a lot of religious institutions and left wing community organizing groups. It was a public uh, attempt to collapse our border, and, and only 17% were actually kids. Absolutely. And so I started peeling back the layers on that, and it led me to uh, uh, some other challenges. Uh, that was illegal immigration, but I started looking at a larger segment of the pie uh, that nobody was talking about in the conservative, liberal, or, or establishment media, and that is the, the bigger piece being legal immigration. And I start as I started peeling back the layers of our legal immigration system, uh, I was finding that uh, we are issuing 1.3 million green cards every year. Uh, about 130,000 of those are coming from nations that hate us and absolutely despise our values. Uh, the well, that's what Phil values. Haney talks about. He watches people come in, get the cards, go back to Pakistan, back to Saudi Arabia, and then come back and then watches them leave and blow stuff up. Exactly. It's crazy. And uh, and that's just the permanent uh, lawful residents, green card holders, 130,000 a year. Then I started looking at visas and our myriad visa programs, and I found we had all kinds of avenues for more people to come in from Middle Eastern and North African countries that hate us. They can come in on fiancé visas. They can come in on various types of work visas. They can come in on entrepreneurial visas and run your local convenience store. They can come in on preacher visas. You know, the R1 religious visa in which we invite uh, thousands every year to come join us here in America from some of the most dastardly places on earth for uh, radical Islam. People who have been uh, who obtained their degrees in Sharia law from uh, Al Azhar University in Cairo or some other university in Saudi Arabia, they have no respect or inkling about what American values stand for. The First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. What's that? We're used to Sharia law, and these are the type of people we're inviting in. 85%. What do you think the master plan is with the government covering up the stealth invasion and then acting like Trump's insane because he doesn't yeah. want to commit suicide? I mean, I saw a big poll. Two out of three Germans hate Merkel, but she's able to manipulate things and stay in office as she floods yeah. them with three million jihadis, 80% military-aged men, so many rape stories a day, and then they just they'll let them off for raping six-year-old kids with, like, a week in jail. I mean, it's like... What is this worship of the most unwashed, out of control, barbarous people? I mean, I talked about J-Lo wanting open borders at the uh, you know uh, uh, Grammys. And I said, lady, go to Somalia for five minutes, you're going to be gang raped. The media said that I wanted her gang raped. No, I didn't. I said, go to Somalia where women are sold on slave blocks. What are there, like three or four Muslim countries still, still sell women as slaves, right? I mean, I know ISIS is selling yeah. female slaves. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and you mentioned Europe. I have a whole chapter in my book, Stealth Invasion, on Europe, and how, and, and the pr basic premise is here we have a model, a real living model of our future right before us in the news every day. If you want to find out what's going on, read about Germany, read about France, Belgium, Sweden. You know, Sweden was the world's most peaceful country a, a couple of decades ago. Now it's uh, the rape capital of Europe, and it's number two worldwide in rapes per capita. And why is it's that? Astounding. Because in because in these Orthodox Islam countries, a woman can be raped if she's unattended or not covered up, and then she's the one that gets charged for the sexual crime. 
That's the point, uh, Alex. These refugees are coming here, and we're so-called screening them. If you listen to the talking points of the U.S. State Department, John Kerry, President Obama, and all of the hacks in between, their talking points are very consistent. They always say that these are the most vetted, most scrutinized individuals of all immigrant types coming into the United States. Hogwash. But I do give them credit for consistency and sticking to their talking points. The truth is, these folks are coming here with a lot of baggage. Sure. I mean, what uh, about Comey? I'm not going to play the whole clip again. He, love him or hate him, he at least did tell the truth and say, we're not vetting anything. There's no vetting. He did. He came out and said there's nothing to vet against. People in Somalia, the government of Somalia, the they government They just issue stuff you can get in the Cracker Jack box. <laughs> exactly. We don't even know who these people are who say they're Syrians. You can buy a Syrian uh, passport on the black market for $100. Uh, and same with Somalia. These are broken countries. They have no law enforcement data against which we can vet. Uh, and, and Comey said this. And guess what? I had an article just last week about a State Department insider who just retired a couple of months ago, 25 years in the State Department. The majority of those years, she served as a refugee coordinator on the ground in the Middle East, Europe, Russia, Cairo. And uh, she visited these U.N. refugee camps. And by the way, the U.N. picks all of our refugees that were. That's we're right. That's why your book's so important. You document that it's the it's the U.N. picks who we then accept putting us under. You in control. I'm going to come back and talk about that and have you on for a full hour in the near future because this is so important. Uh, the book uh, is absolutely critical. People understand. And I've even got mainstream news clips admitting. I mean, we can play some of those, I guess, when we come back, but everybody knows it, uh, that it's, it's just all lies. They're not vetting. They've got fake passports. So someone asked me when we come back, what do you think the plan is? What are they going to do when more of these people kill people? Investigative journalist Leo Homans, our guest for one more little short segment. Then we're going to get Dr. Steve Pachinik on to get his take on the open spy war, civil war going on in our country to say Trump's a Russian spy because his national security advisor talked to the Russians on the phone. That's what they do. But then he didn't tell them all of it, so he's gone. I think that's blood in the water. But uh, stealth invasion's on. It's being exposed now. They now say the president doesn't have the power to even control anybody. Just come on in from Somalia which, I mean, you literally get kidnapped in five minutes if you're there. But J-Lo says bring people there. I just said she should go there and enjoy it for herself. I mean, I hope she does it. She would be kidnapped. Absolutely. She'd probably be gang raped. And the media then acts like I'm attacking a woman. They just love Islam. So let me ask you a question. Where do you think this is going? I know you've documented it all in your book, and it, it's, 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 it, I, I know it's frustrating you being informed, seeing the media lying about what's really happening. So people should, you know, research the information. But... Looking at the end game, why would the globalists that already run this country in the West want to bring in a bunch of incompatible crazy people? That's a great question, uh, Alex. In my opinion, uh, what we see is an unholy alliance between the secular globalist left and the religious globalist Islamists. Exactly. And, uh, you know, the, uh, on the face of it, they would seem to have little in common because, you know, you think of the secular left as being feminist and uh, pro-woman uh, and pro-gay rights and all that, whereas Islamists tend to uh, not be too fond of those things. But if you look a little deeper, they really do have a lot in common, these two. Uh, we these have two footage all over the world, uh, Germany and the U.S., of the, the, the leaders are Islamic women, and they're actually getting women to say that, that, that women's rights is now Sharia. I, I can't even believe right. it. It's crazy. But if you look at what they, they, they share common enemies, OK, they, they both have a, uh, a common hatred of Christianity and Judeo-Christian values. Uh, they both have a, a disdain for national borders. The Muslims, the Islamists want a uh, ca global caliphate. The uh, globalist secular people want a global super socialist state without borders. Uh, they both believe in the nanny state, sort of cradle to grave, taking care of people. Uh, Sharia law has those same principles with, in common with, with the socialists. And, of course, jihad. On, on the Islamist side, you have jihad, you know, violent revolution. And the socialists, as we've seen, are now getting more and more violent and are for all for revolution, revolutionary overthrow of uh, the American system. They both also have a common disdain for free speech. They are completely intolerant of free speech. We saw that on the campus of Berkeley last week, and we see it all the time, of course, in Muslim countries where you cannot speak out against Islam or Muhammad or anything that Islam says is sacred. It's a crime. You can lose your head. 
Okay, so they do have more in common than people think, and I think they'll work out these differences after they uh, accomplish their goal of having, uh, you know, global control. And and why do they want to flood our countries with refugees from the third world, Alex? I think it's to break down society, to cause instability, divisions, and wear down our social cohesion and, and what's left of patriotic, nationalist Americans, hardworking, middle-class Americans. Uh, That's I, I it. Exactly. They bring in the uncompatible group, they control it, then they take our rights away, saying we've exactly. angered them, uh, and then we get WikiLeaks documents admitting it. But I can't even keep track of all the articles. Here's Fox 7 Austin. ICE detainer denied for man charged with repeatedly sexually assaulting young girl. I have two of these in one week from different people in Austin. They just say raping kids re reportedly. You can go. It's like a godlike status. Well, it, it just gets crazier and crazy. And then I have like five articles out of Germany without even looking for them today where they're just letting people rape women or giving them a week in jail. I mean, it's just like, what? On, and now they're saying, we are going to have to have days a week where women can't show their faces at swimming pools, wear burkeets, It's like, adopt, and, and like, don't sh wear short dresses. The, the Muslims might rape you. And then, the, you know, like, the liberal mayor comes out in a German city and says, well, the women are good looking. It's your fault. It's not the Muslims' fault, right? They don't know it's illegal. They and, and Alex, again, that's the harbinger. Ignorance Germany of the law is no excuse. Germany and Sweden are our future if we don't change course and do it quickly. You you guys reported on Twin Falls, Idaho last year, so did I. And if you recall, the backlash to that was was furious. They did not want us to tell the truth about what happened there with the little five-year-old girl being sexually assaulted by yes. the three refugee boys. And, and they were from Iraq and Sudan, and they raped this, this and little And the media said it was girl. a hoax, and then later it came out it was true. And they're still saying it's a hoax. Alex, it was fake news, they tell us. Uh, yeah, and I was recently berated by a retired Supreme Court justice in Idaho who said that uh, myself, Infowars, and Breitbart had it all wrong. We were just, uh, you know— Everybody uh, knows no, Islam loves women. Please come on for a full hour very soon. The book available at World Debt Daily, Stealth Invasion. I'm Alex Jones. Straight ahead, thanks. inside the coup taking place against Trump. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the Internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to Infowars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. Infowars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You going to sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you going to be part of history? Don't sit by and let the Internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. <laughs>